Good evening. I'm going to open up the council uh, session for the workshop workshop session. First is the city manager's report on issues raised at prior council meetings. Items to be presented. Michelle Alonzo, Director of Planning and Redevelopment regarding 11 or 1001 First Avenue. Good evening members of the public and city council members i'm here to present you tonight a draft redevelopment plan for the property known as i'm sorry need to, 1001 first avenue block 401 lots 10 11 12 and 13. this is also common commonly known as the Think plastic site. This area is zoned R1. We were approached by the owner of the property about a, a, con a developmental concept of an apartment building with retail on the ground floor. And we entertained the idea with the inclusion of 20% affordable housing. So what I'm presenting tonight um, is this draft redevelopment plan that would be an overlay and would permit this project only if it has 20% affordable housing. The way um, this project is being presented, and of, and of course, after tonight, I'm just presenting it. We can put it on the next council meeting to be referred to the planning board and adopt as an ordinance and this would be done under the area need of rehabilitation designation that we have citywide um, this would be a building of 80 units it would have retail on the ground floor on Langford Street uh, it would be on the corners on Langford and Second, and Langford and, and First. And originally, there was a concept for um, a dog run area, but in order to accommodate additional parking, it would be a flex area where it would be permeable pavers that could be used for parking. And if there isn't the need for that parking, it can be extra green space. So, I'm presenting this to you to and it, with 20 percent affordability 16 units would be deed restricted affordable units so i'm presenting this to you tonight for questions and for input um this again this is a draft this is a draft plan and this is also like a precursor of when we do adopt if we adopt a citywide inclusive affordable housing ordinance with inclusion inclusionary zoning of what we would see they um, you should have in your packet a, a rendering of you know of the proposed project you know um, the redevelopment plan the regulations the draft regulations I put in it is to guarantee a project that would be of this quality but it doesn't necessarily have to be this design per se but it talks about materials and it also has sustainability requirements. And where does the parking go, Michelle? Parking is, goes par in a semi-enclosed garage. Like it, around the back? Yes, but it's also enclosed in that <coughs> this the parking is behind this wall on Langford. Okay. But then it's open in the back. Okay. And then the overflow parking would is on the um, the green space shown in the back in in the drawing. Okay. 
is there any residential on the first floor? It's all no, there is a few units. And retail, Maybe 30 percent. No, there is. There. There are four units proposed on the ground floor. Two facing first and two facing second. I like it. Are there any questions? Are they applying for a pilot? They would be eligible to apply for one. Everybody's up. Are they, did they indicate that? No. Okay, <clears throat> that's good. Thank you. But I do want to state that um, with the afford, we would enter into a redevelopers agreement for this project, especially about the affordability controls and the affordable units. Okay. So, Michelle, this would have to be referred to the planning board, correct? Correct. And that would be done by way of a resolution at a future council meeting? Correct. Okay. Thanks, Michelle. Thank, Thank you. you. Next on the agenda is review of agenda items for this evening's meeting by the city manager. <coughs> I'd like to skip into the workforce development plan at this point. Sure. 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 Matters under city manager workforce development plan presentation. Good evening, um, Mr. Mayor, Madam Deputy Mayor, uh, Council Members. Um, my name is Tony Watterson. I'm the uh, Director of Workforce Development for Thomas P. Miller & Associates. I've got with me uh, Brittany Doherty, uh, who's a colleague at Thomas P. Miller & Associates. Uh, we're a consulting firm based in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, we wanted to first thank you for the opportunity to come tonight uh, and to, to work with you on this process of developing a uh, workforce strategic plan. Um, Brittany's going to uh, talk mostly tonight and give you a, a brief rundown of what we did, uh, the outcomes, and also some strategies that uh, we can go uh, implement moving forward to, to uh, assist the city in uh, its challenges and leverage those opportunities that we discovered. Um, again, TPMA is a, a full-service firm. We're based in Indianapolis. Uh, we do work across the country from uh, Oregon to Florida and several places in between. Um, we appreciate the uh, the opportunity we've met some amazing people here in the city. Um, Brittany's going to talk about uh, the uh, engagement activities that we did throughout the planning process that started, um, I guess, around February of this year uh, and has uh, gone through uh, until today. So, um, without further ado, I'll turn it over to Brittany and again, thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, I think, as most of you know, we started this project um, in February, and at the start of the project, we really focused on stakeholder engagement and, and really meeting as many people as we could in the city and getting their input on you know what were the strengths the challenges the needs the gaps and the opportunities for workforce development um, we had I think three public meetings and then five input sessions one of those was with um, community partners and community-based organizations and then the other three of those were with um, employers and business representatives and then we had additional kind of one-on-one -on -one interviews and conversations with local leaders so that was where we started um, along with the stakeholder engagement or while we were doing that we did more research um, about the the data and the occupations and the targeted industries for asbury park and then from all of those those activities we uh, came up with some preliminary goals and strategies for the region um, with the plan we have one overarching um, theme and that's one Asbury Park um, through our engagement activities we heard about the east side and the west side and and we really thought for the city to be um, successful and grow economically and continue this um, revitalization there needs to be one Asbury Park really one city instead of two separate communities um, and one city where business thrives and all residents have opportunities for employment and um, being able to support their families so that's kind of the overarching theme and then within that we have three different goals um, the first goal is expanding career opportunities for all res Asbury Park residents and that's really focused on developing businesses so bringing in new business um, expanding and serving the legacy businesses that are already here 
um, and those would be in um, also targeting some specific areas based on the data, um, such as healthcare and professional services. Um, trying to get Asbury, Asbury Park as a year-round destination um, is one of those strategies as well. And then the second goal is developing the talent required to support business growth and industry. Um, and this is really giving all residents the opportunity to increase their skills um, so that they're ready and available for those employment opportunities um, and they have the skills that the businesses need at the time and for future growth. Um, and then the third goal is establishing a pipeline for the next generation of talent. So again, looking to the future, looking to the young adults and the youth in the area and making sure they have opportunities um, for employment, for continued education, and again, to succeed and th um, thrive in Asbury Park. Yep. So I, I'd uh, just kind of echo uh, what Brittany said there and, and think about the, the goals that have been set up as far as the, the three of them. And we're really looking at one being that business goal, right, and, and, and growing uh, and fostering business. But then you've got developing the current workforce that exists. Um, what we did find is the, the high unemployment rate here uh, it can actually be an opportunity. Um, we go around the, the country and even around your, your state, you have a very low unemployment rate, so there's a lack of actual people. Um, so what you can really leverage that and develop uh, your existing workforce. And then when we think about what's sustainable, uh, we think about the future, and that's really what goal three is about. It's, it's looking at what's in the pipeline and how we can be proactive and going and connecting that back to the first goal and saying, what are the future uh, industries and business that we can bring in and, and grow here, and we can prepare that pipeline for, for future demand. Any questions for us about any of the goals or specific strategies? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I think we're, we'll probably spend some time trying to figure out implementation of yeah. them. Yeah, and I think with the implementation, it'll be key. You know, this is um, a workforce strategy for the city, but it needs to involve partners. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, there's certainly lots of existing organizations that are doing great things. Um, and so, it, you know, partnering with economic development efforts for business attraction, partnering with your community-based organizations and your workforce system to help develop the skills and certainly involving education um, for the education and training piece as well. And we provided some, some actions and, and implementation strategies in the, towards the end of the document, uh, along with a, uh, an implementation uh, template during the administratively during the process of this <coughs> excuse me, the, the drafts were also shared with the uh, planning board subcommittee doing the master plan re-examination report so that the demand occupations and the uses could sync up um, across both boards questions uh, the director of planning michelle alonzo myself that mass uh, shared everything that tma did so that we made sure that this was a cross-pollination of ideas and something that's actually actionable across both plans. Yeah, at the, at the same time we were re reviewing the draft um, city plan and incorporating and making references um, between the two plans as well. So. And also with the state and, and regional workforce plans as well. Well, the key thing is the implementation. So uh, that's the next step. And this is a good report, but it's just going to sit on a shelf for two years a terrible report but that's our fault uh, I have a question I meant to ask it before I'm not even sure if I asked Michael or not uh, on your page 75 and I can read it library not part of the county system and not being offered not being used to offer other services in New Jersey some are using libraries for AJC but not Asbury Park what's AJC American Job Center so that's for through your workforce development center um, I think it, they may be called the one stop here or America Job Center um, basically where kind of unemployment job training um, those types of services and in some parts of the country those are happening in libraries um, so they're providing you know additional um, kind of facilities across the country where people can access those um, services and so that was one potential opportunity um, that was cited as a need I think right now they're currently in Neptune and Eatontown um, so you know if there's a way to utilize an existing facility maybe the senior center or somewhere else to provide some of those um, American Job Center services again but that's you know in partnership with your workforce development board okay. 
Thanks. Questions? Thank you. No. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to move back up to the review of agenda items? Yes. Review yeah. of agenda items for this evening's meeting. At this time, I'd also like to call up um, Jason Harrell of TNM Associates so that we can throw in the update of the engineering program. And there's a couple items for him on this, just to, to briefly discuss. Sorry, Jack. Mm -hmm. No problem. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Good evening. I'll tell you when you get to Okay. Uh, items 345, 346, and 347 are RCA awards um, for. Um, Project 2017-340 is a person-to-person, person-in-place um, person translator license. Um, 349 is police officer Terry Williams to pay out for his retirement. Um, 350 is the appropriation to budget transfers. 351 is canceling balances of grants receivables and grants appropriated. These are grants that the city received all the cash for, and there might be some money left that wasn't expended over the years. Canceling that cash that goes to miscellaneous revenue not anticipated as a budget line item. Um, this is cleaning up the grant folks um, in civil terms. Resolution 352 is a credit to the sewer account, and 353 is an administrative error on a, a sewer bill. Moving on to individual resolutions. 354 is a resolution authorizing payments of bills. Um, 355 is rejection of bids for Bay Area Springwood Avenue Park improvements. I'm um, speaking with the Environmental Shade Tree Commission. They believe they can do the work, um, which is a substantial change and substantial cost reduction. Wherever the local public contracts are, we can reject the bids. Um, I've talked to uh, <coughs> Tom Vinsky, who's there, and they think they can do the work. Um, 356 is a war to Lucas Brothers for the Springwood Avenue Sanitary Sewer Project. 357 is the construction coordination inspection services for TNM for the final parts of the 2015 road program. 358 and 359 are changeovers 15 and 16 for BlackRock for the road program. Changeover 15 is um, a sanitary sewer manhole in mines. Um, there's two sanitary sewer manholes that need to be rebuilt and 700 feet of pipe. And 16 is the paving of what um, it's just going to be a simple overlay, but that street is horrific. We did have some extra cash, cash so we're going to move forward with that. And taking a step back, 357 is for TNM to coordinate the services. Um, they leave their fees for <coughs> design for 358 and 359. And at this time, I'd like to change just to give an update on what 356 entails. Um, before he gets into that, we have a pre-construction meeting scheduled on November 30th involving this project. One of the main issues that we are going to be facing is Main Street will be closed in parts for two weeks um, as we work 24 hours on this project. So we're going to start getting out notifications um, as soon as we can once we get everything set up so that people know. Um, but, but as part of the DOT traffic control plan, there is robust police requirement to drive traffic. <coughs> So when you have that pre-construction meeting, can you invite the Chamber of Commerce and the Merchant Guild just so they can get the word out also to the business communities? Okay. Oh, it's going to it's be. Nor it's normally internal administrative. But I know, but it's okay. Well, after. Yeah, we'll share Br Brief them after, but it's going to be hectic for a couple of weeks in. My hope is that it's only going to be a couple of days. Okay. And it's full uh, 24 hours, or is it late at night? DOT, DOT has specified that. Because we're installing sanitary sewer in what's called an open cut format, we're, we're basically opening up the road and digging straight down. We're not tunneling, if okay. you will. So if it's an open cut, the most efficient and, and fastest way to complete the work is to run from, from one side to the other without stopping uh, in the afternoon or at, or at night and closing the hole up and making it drivable like we would on a normal um, construction project. Um, so DOT has specified to us that as soon as we open their right of way, we're required to go, if, if we're going to shut down the state highway, 
we have to we have to uh, mandate that the contractor continue construction uh, on a 24-hour basis until the road is reopened. And part of that reason was because DOT. Is Wait, say that last say that last part one more time. Okay, um, DOT has mandated that if we close the if we close the road okay. and we have a detour around if we're if we're hard closing the road we're required to continue construction on a 24-hour basis until we are through their right-of-way from basically from the corner of Corbo's to the corner of meat and more okay okay I it's it. it's 75 feet and I'm anticipating as long as we don't hit crazy things underground which we will which we probably will <laughs> um, I'm, I'm hoping it'll be less than a week of construction in the DOT's right-of-way and that was a DOT requirement <clears throat> because in part they want this project finished before January 1st because they said they're going to award Main Street the reconstruction on February 15th which we've also now heard is pushed back to March. We still haven't seen the Main Street plans. So this is all predicated on DOT saying get this done by a date because of what they believe is going to happen for Main Street. So at the uh, <coughs> pre-construction New Jersey Transit, where their buses will be there? Yes. Because they're going to have a lot New of Jersey, invited. New Jersey Transit will be invited. Okay. Uh, DOT will be invited. They've already committed to attending. Um, Obviously, all the all the city EMS and and police and and the normal cast of characters for and then we'll notify the businesses directly affected. We can. And the, the plan is obviously to utilize Nixle. So anyone watching who hasn't signed up for Nixle, please do because that's where we're going to be sending out the emergency notices. Okay. Do you want to explain the jacking for it? Um, I can do that. Um, once we're completed with our with our portion going across Main Street. Um, because the, the, the sanitary sewer line is going to go all the way through to Memorial Drive. Um, in order to construct that line underneath the railroad tracks, we perform an operation called jacking and boring, which entails digging a large open pit on one side and a large open pit on the other side and using a hydraulic jacking mechanism, we actually push the pipe through the dirt underneath the tracks without disturbing uh, what's above it. It's a relatively complicated operation, um, uh, but it is it is uh, very common, uh, especially in in northern New Jersey, where you have uh, uh, utility lines and and all kinds of things that you can't typically dig an open pit obviously we can't dig up the railroad tracks so we have to go with uh, a jack and bore operation okay and what's the ETA on web Jason? Uh, the ETA on web street uh, if, you approve it tonight. if you approve it tonight it's on the agenda for for approval um, the contractor is anticipating beginning paving operations on sunset of on Thursday of next week uh, that should run approximately four days and directly after that he intends to go right to Webb Street so uh, Thursday is that the, the the 30th probably the second week of December to mill and pave Webb Street okay which is great because we didn't think we'd be able to get to it to next spring so having the money uh, web sunset and fourth the fourth weather. paving operations begin on Monday okay but what I'm more concerned about and I'm happy because it's starting to get close to winter and we're pushing it mm -hmm. another good PR be it letters to every house or whatever just so the neighbors and everybody involved no not the last second oh go move your cars 
couple I know that's before. been an ongoing issue. Right. I'll make sure that and, you know, both contractors. Right, and then once we get up to the top of Sunset with the Sunset Landing and everything, the detours and everything, so I'm sure you're used to it by now, but we've got to try to keep as many people as happy as possible. Uh, so as much as we can get out letters to all the houses through the contractors as far as like, unless uh, bad weather, this street's going to be paved on these days. Uh, incidentally, I met with New Jersey American Water last week, uh, and they have committed to uh, milling and paving Bridge Street between 5th and Sunset uh, as a repair <laughs> of their uh, prior work. Apparently, there were some, uh, some personnel changes, and that kind of got lost in the mix. Uh, so they've uh, committed to at least surface paving it. Uh, half of Locust, um, all of Jeffrey between Locust and Fifth, and half of Fifth between Bridge and Locust. Did they give a time frame? Uh, they did. Uh, I met with them last week. They said within two weeks. Good. Where do we stand on Asbury Avenue in the county? I have not talked to the county. However, their contractor is BlackRock, who's working on our on our road program job. Uh, I spoke with the owner of BlackRock. They indicated to me, and this is off the record because it hasn't been announced by the county, uh, that. Yeah, I was just going to say. You shouldn't say it. I, pro I probably should. Um, <laughs> they are uh, at this point unsure of when the county is going to give them the go ahead to mill and pave. But they have been out there replacing all the storm sewers. They have been out there replacing mm -hmm. storm sewers, curbs, and handicap ramps. And they intend to continue that until completion, which uh, I'm being told should be within the next two to three weeks. When do you anticipate you're going to do the work at the train? At the uh, I am. <coughs> anticip we're anticipating, we're, we're required by NJDO, uh, DOT to be completed and out of their right-of-way, out of the Main Street right-of-way, at the very latest February 1st. Um, the jacking and boring operation, I'm anticipating uh, <coughs> first to second week in February to be through uh, under the railroad tracks. Uh, we should be pretty well complete with pipe by the end of February. Um, We'll give uh, a couple of months, February, March, April, a couple of months for the trenches <coughs> all to settle, and we'll come back in to final pave um, as soon as the weather breaks in the spring. Let's hope for a warm winter. That, that would be on. great. Yeah, but I'm sure we're creative, and I'm sure you're already thinking about it, but uh, since DPW is at 9 Main Street, the two ways in or out, DPW either going to be 808 Springwood or 9 Main Street. <coughs> How do we get our plow trucks to the neighborhoods when I guess we have to cut through Neptune? Most of that's how we're planning. <laughs> most of the sewer work is going to be on the eastbound side of Springwood Avenue, closest to DPW, from the from the center line over, um, we can look at <coughs> potential traffic plans that would allow the westbound side of Springwood Avenue to be passable by DPW vehicles. That would work, um, remember, if it's possible. Our, it's our cost of traffic. Okay. So we have a lot of possibility. And if we see a storm <coughs> coming, we can put some of the fleet down yeah. at the sewer plant run out of there. Yeah, yeah. Bill's been involved from the beginning. Okay, good. It's going to be a difficult one for that. Worst case scenario, but it has to be done. And remember, for those of you who don't, aren't aware of what happened years ago when the city <coughs> did a lot of the infrastructure on the west side, they skipped this part of it. Um, so there is a smaller sewer line that um, goes from 24 to 18 back to 24. We need to fix that, especially with all the development going on. But that this is something that was neglected almost 10 years ago, and now we can fix it. I think they skipped it on purpose. They definitely <laughs> skipped it. On <laughs> I don't blame them. I would have. Too. <laughs> Any other questions? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, the last three resolutions is the Main Street Redevelopment Plan. Uh, Michelle is here if there's any questions referring to the Planning Board. Um, resolution 361 is cleaning up some language in the Michaels Development Group. Um, one of the drafts had 14 months, one had 16 months of construction. So we're just making this uniform. And staff is recommending 2017-362, um, which is the first amendment to the Waterfront Redevelopment Plan, um, being tabled at this time. And we're going to relist it at a later date. Is there any questions? No, so just if anybody's here for 217-362, it will not be talked about tonight. It will be tabled. So if you're here for that, you can go home. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, as you'll recall, Resolution 360 was addressed during the last work session at the last council meeting, and basically this is just a referral to the planning board with regard to amending the redevelopment plan in order to incorporate additional uses associated with that property, including a recording studio, and it was vetted at the last meeting, just to refresh your recollections. Okay, we'll continue on to matters by the city council. So um, I'd just like to say that uh, for our residents in need of a Thanksgiving dinner, there are two restaurants who have offered to provide free meals. Um, Barrio Castero is offering a free meal on um, Wednesday, early Thanksgiving meal from 12 to 3 at 610 Bangs. And Langosta Lounge on Thanksgiving is providing a free meal from 1130 till 2. I also want to remind everyone that we've got four Christmas tree lightings coming up. One on November 25th in Convention Hall at 7. One on December 1st in Fireman's Park at 5.30. One on December 2nd in Press Plaza at 5.45. And one on December 9th in Springwood Park at 5, which will follow the celebration of Kwanzaa. Um, and also, I just want to remind you that it's also Small Business Saturday, so if anyone's out shopping, I hope you'll support our local businesses. And I uh, hope everyone has a happy Thanksgiving. I just want to advise that the Rotary Club of Asbury Park is teaming up with a program called Making MSC Connections, and they're going to be providing free computers. There's an opportunity, the applications can be obtained from the asburyparkrotary.org or by emailing a woman named Brooke Bennett. I have flyers and I have applications. They will be on the desk on the second floor in City Hall if anyone needs them. And I also would like to wish everybody and their families a very happy Thanksgiving. I have nothing at this time. I'd like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving also. I have uh, two short topics. While right now they're not affecting Asbury Park, they could affect us in the future, so I'd rather address them now. The first one um, is a bill under consideration in the House of Representatives called the Concealed Carry Representative Act of 2017, which would require all states to recognize permits issued by other states including ones with less stringent laws. I agree with other mayors who are against this and have already adopted resolutions and would hope the council would think about this and adopt a resolution. This would make New Jersey subject to other states' laws that are much weaker than our gun laws and it's totally inappropriate for New Jersey in my opinion. Second issue, uh, on Monday, <coughs> the federal administration under the TPS temporary protected status are ordering 60,000 Haitians back to Haiti saying everything is fine in Haiti even which it's not we know that from the earthquake and the storms even the time frame that they're laying out of July 2019 makes no sense because they could do two more reviews before then uh, Asbury Park has a lot large Haitian population which has been very supportive of the city in many ways. And the city's already reached out to the leaders of the Haitian population so we can sit down and talk about this and see if there's anything we can do to support 
and seeing if we can get this overturned by the administration in Washington. Uh, so that's it. And again, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. I have one more. I think I forgot one of the free meals at the table is also doing a free meals. Anybody have any information on that? And it's on Thursday, Michelle. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Do you have any other matters by the city manager? No, it's fine. Matters by the city attorney? Not at this time. Okay, at this time, we'll take a break until 7 p.m. until the regular meeting. Good evening, everyone. We're going to call the order the November 21st regular council meeting. Councilmember Chapman? Here. Councilmember Clayton? Here. Councilmember Kendall? Here. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Here. Mayor Moore? Here. Please rise for a silent prayer or moment of reflection, please. Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Every time. <laughs> now I see you, I see you jump. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coast and the Stir Ledger on January 3rd, 2017, and posted on a bulletin board the same day. All notices are on file with the city clerk. Can I have a motion to open the meeting up to the public, please? Move it. Second. Anybody wishing to come up and speak before the council, please state your name and address for the record. Each member of the public has three minutes to speak. Um, oh. Hi, uh, Linda Phillips, uh, 400 Deal Lake Drive, but I'm not here to represent myself. I'm speaking for Derek Minnell Bloom, who lives on first. He couldn't be here. Um, Greetings, everyone. My name is Derek Minow Bloom. I am the Social and Food Justice Director at Trinity Church. I cannot make the meeting tonight, so I ask someone else to read my statement. I work and am friends with many people experiencing homelessness in town because I run the food pantry in the soup kitchen. I feel people from the soup kitchen ask a few people from the soup kitchen ask me if they are allowed to be in the train station. They ask this because they have been asked to leave the train station by the Asbury Park Police or have heard that others have been asked to leave. Is the train station a public place that people can go for fellowship and to stay warm? And if not, is there a warm public place where people experiencing homelessness can go? Michael, I'll start. Uh, Derek emailed me this late this afternoon I tried to get back to him because I emailed the city manager and the answer is yes people can and correct me if I'm wrong on your reply uh, yes people can go into the train station to stay warm and then if there's a code blue or something where it's even colder they can come to City Hall because now that we have the is the generator up and running yeah we're fully operational we're fully operational here we have the full-time generator that does the whole building so if the transportation center shuts down they can come to city hall so city hall would be open on a cold night or something it's open all the time the front door oh it's open, open. Uh -huh. okay so right. the the answer is yes okay. and i'm glad you asked the question so derek thanks you too <laughs> okay and i did I, I tried calling him so he's busy so does trinity open for the homeless um, it, I think that there's some issue with that legality or something with that. But um, since I have 50 minutes, 50 seconds left, I just want to say on a personal note, thank you for Bridge Street. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. And Michael, can every now and then we send <coughs> Doug? He does go. Over he goes to once a week, and he also goes to um, court to work with people then um, the one issue that we've had in any social service provider we ask that um, when people do come here to this building they don't destroy the building we've had some we allow it until there's vandalism right and once there's vandalism alcohol or drugs we have to close the building down right 
Okay. Thank you. Next. Hi, Tim Horman, 704 7th Avenue. Uh, I have two issues tonight. First, we received our assessment card this week. I did some preliminary research. If you take the new 2018 assessments of the homes of council members Kendall, Clayton, Deputy Mayor Quinn, and Mayor Moore, and combine them all, our assessment is higher than that number. Combined, you control 50% more land and 50% more housing square footage than us. And yet somehow the assessor believes that our home is worth more than all of yours combined. When I'm done, I would like to hear your opinion as to whether you believe that is fair or not. Second, I wrote an email to Ms. Quinn and Mr. Raffetta last Friday and neither responded to me. I would like to read the email and I would appreciate a response from both of them. As a member of the Committee of Petitioners, I write to you to specifically about your statements to the committee and the press about our settlement discussions. On October 30th, Mr. Raffetto contacted John Biondo, a committee member, saying, on behalf of the city of Asbury Park, please be advised that I have been authorized to reach out to you about a proposed compromise. On November 3rd, the city rejected our timely settlement offer, with Mr. Raffetto further stating to John Biondo that, quote, the city's short-term rental subcommittee met earlier today to review the proposed compromise ordinance. The following week, on November 9th, in an article by Jill Bartlett that appeared in the Asbury Park Sun, Council Member Quinn was attributed as providing the following information, quote, Quinn said the council has not discussed whether it will work with Biondo to have petitioners rescind the ballot initiative. If as stated by Council Member Quinn, the council had not by November 8th ever discussed whether it would work with the committee of petitioners through Mr. Uh, through Mr. Biondo, exactly what authority did you have, Mr. Raffetto, to negotiate a settlement with the committee of petitioners? According to the city code, all the powers of the city of Asbury Park are vested in the city council in section 2-2.8. And if the council had never discussed it directly prior to October 30th, and Mr. Raffetto uh, purportedly acted outside the scope of his authority, why would you, Council Member Quinn, still say that you hadn't even considered working with Mr. Biondo when at a minimum, and no less than five days prior, as a member of the subcommittee, you had purportedly rejected the Committee of Petitioners settlement offer? I continued, I expect an answer to these questions from both of you. In the meantime, I'm going to remind you both of your particular obligations as lawyers under the New Jersey ethics rules that you, quote, not engage in conduct involving dishonesty, fraud, deceit, or misrepresentation. Mr. Horman, on behalf of the City Council and myself, I have the following statement to make. The city is confident in the legality of the short-term rental ordinance adopted on November 8, 2017, as well as the process undertaken to adopt it. Given that litigation has now been filed challenging the validity of that ordinance and per the direction of our insurance carrier's attorneys, neither the council nor I will be making any further comments on this topic at this time. As much as we may like to respond to you, we've been directed not to do so, given the fact that litigation is now pending. But honestly, this has nothing to do with the litigation that's pending. You heard the attorney's answer, and that's going to be the answer throughout the night. Okay. I'll go back to your first question. I can't answer for anybody else. Uh, and I'm not going to answer. I'll trade you my house straight up for your house tomorrow. No question about that. Uh, we, we knew the tax cards were going out. On November the 6th, we sent 3,500 letters out. I don't know if you got one. I don't know if I you did get okay. one. Yes. And it had a frequently asked question concerning property tax assessment and the impact on property taxes. We made more copies that are over on the table if anybody needs to pick one up. Uh, I'm sure you read that. Uh, and if you do not feel the number is correct, you have every right to appeal that. I know the deadline, I believe, is January 15th. January 15th at the county. However, property owners have the right to file at the state through April 1st. Okay. If their assessments are in excess of a million dollars. Correct. But you have no opinion about the fact that your four homes combined. Well, all right, I you can own tell you. Fifty percent more land and fifty percent more square footage of housing. A well, council has no control whatsoever over the setting of assessments. That's entirely within the jurisdiction of the assessor. So I don't think that council would have any comment. Okay, but on that. we're all residents, right? And we all agree that we're in this together, right? And that there should be some fairness to all of this. No. Well, the assessor works for the county, correct? 
He reports to the county. He reports right. to the county tax assessor, but he's appointed by the mayor and council. Um, and the intention of the pilot program that's in effect in Monmouth County called the Assessment Demonstration Program is supposed to ensure that all assessments uh, are fair and equitable um, by making sure that the assessor on an annual basis reassesses all properties to make sure that they are consistent with the property's fair market value. As the mayor indicated, if you feel aggrieved by the assessment uh, that has been put on your property for 2018, you have the right to file an appeal before either the Monmouth County Board of Taxation or the State Tax Court. Okay, thank you for that. And I know last year my taxes went up, and this year I believe they're going up also. So. Our assessments went up, our assessment went up more than uh, Council Member Quinn's entire assessment. Well, again, that's, so that's, that's, that's between, that's okay. Our assessment, we were already the highest okay. tax paying single home in this okay, town. Tim, that's, we, we, you, you have every right to appeal. Thank you. Yes, sir. John Biondo, 7047th. We do have every right to appeal, but it's okay for us to ask elected officials their opinion on the fairness of our tax assessor. And it's not fair to hide behind your lawyer every time we ask a question. Yesterday I filed- I didn't today, hide behind the lawyer or my answer- Reclaiming on. my time. Yesterday I filed and today I served upon the city attorney a summons and complaint asking that the Monmouth County Court declare as invalid the recently passed city ordinance related to short-term rentals. It continues to be our position that the city cannot repeal the very law upon which a Faulkner Act petition is based. If you were allowed to do this, then every Faulkner Act initiative could be defeated by simply repealing the law the initiative seeks to amend. Clearly, you cannot do that. I call upon the city attorney again to acknowledge that very plain fact and advise the city to withdraw its ordinance rather than waste taxpayer resources on legal fees for an indefensible position. I also believe the council should be honest and set the record straight with regard to offers of compromises, Mr. Horman detailed. It was I who initially reached out to the city attorney with a willingness to compromise. I did so via Facebook Messenger and Mr. Raffetto followed up. He asked me to draft a compromise ordinance, which I took pains to do. When I submitted that to him with several concessions from our position, he advised me that the city responded with no. No counteroffer, no commentary, just no. He claimed that because I was firm in our compromise position, there was no reason for the city to respond. And despite that intransigence, I offered a second compromise position, which I reiterated a second time last week. The city rejected the pro proposal again with no counteroffer, reasoning, or justification. At some point, I was approached by Pam Lamberton, who offered to write new legislation for us as she purported to be an expert. I politely and temporarily declined because I knew her opinion on the matter and felt it would have been futile until the city expressed any, willing to comp any willingness to compromise at all. In response, Ms. Lamberton slandered me on the internet as somehow lying to the public or giving misinformation. I have not lied at all to the public. My taxes are about to be $24,000 and I know you will not state your opinion, but I would love to know why you think I would stay here and whether you want people like me to stay here, $24,000. And while my taxes are $24,000, the first thing you seek to do is to impinge my ability to make money through short-term rentals. I am what you're driving out. I know you don't like me, happy Thanksgiving, but I am who you're driving away. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chris Seekin 40. I actually have a question. I live in Ocean Grove. Am I allowed to participate? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. But Address just speak up a little bit, please. 24 Web Ave, apartment 9. Um, Can you just state your name again? Christine Conforti. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a question regarding the workforce development plan. Um, I love the ethos of one Asbury. Um, and the question is, is there uh, a subset to the plan or complementary program around entrepreneurship skills, investment in small business? Um, I was looking up at the latest census, the numbers are from 2012, but it seems that both women-owned and minority-owned businesses are about a third. Um, and I'm curious if there's any targets or programs to make that 50-50, both women and male-owned and also minority and, and white-owned. We have the set-aside, right? Yeah. Uh, locally, we have a set-aside program. Um, it was implemented last year or early this year um, to try to encourage minority businesses of all types, veterans, women, um, every minority classification under the state to, try to get them city contracts. Um, as part of the workforce development plan, those questions came up specifically during the, the public sessions, the open houses. Um, that's part of working with the county um, because they're the ones who have money and referral ability to the state especially working with the Economic Development Authority. We can't do anything locally right now, but 
that's why we have to partner with the county with that. So, so what would be in the local control to ensure that there's a sense of equality? I guess the on a, on a vision level, it would be um, such a disappointment or missed opportunity if all this great development happens, but it turns into more of like a service economy, right? So the minority are in service jobs. They meet workforce development goals, but <coughs> you still don't have equal ownership. You still don't have an equal sense of um, shared ownership in the in, in the community. So what what is it at the local level in your control to influence that? At the local level, we have very little control. I think um, professionally, my experiences and what I think we need to do as the city is is improve the access to capital for especially for entrepreneurship. Um, that is one of the things we're looking at through the budget committee and working with our financial advisors. One of the things that um, the city has faced over the years is a transitional aid municipality. We've always been required to raise taxation as much as possible. Um, that's been a state law, a state regulation for us. As we now transition away from transitional aid, and I didn't mean that to be a pun, but it came out that way, what we're looking at is being able to improve our um, financial situation where we can get re-rated through the credit agencies. Um, we've had discussions with Moody's and S&P. That stability will then allow some opening of the credit markets. Um, also, we are meeting with Senator-elect Gopal, Gopal in the next week or two, um, talking about uh, the tax credit programs that have been offered throughout the state, um, specifically Patterson, that we should be emulating here so that there is more of an opportunity. So that's on the local level, but we also need to partner with our state representatives to get some of those things done. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate your humor and your lightness, one. <laughs> and two, um, on the what about education program in the sense that planting the seed on someone's head that starting a business is a possibility, not just getting a, you know, a job and the development happening? Uh, the school had a gentleman working on that. Um, his name was Brian Stokes. He's no longer with the school. One of the things you'll notice in the plan is to work closer with the school. Um, we now have a full-time director of social services, and that came up during the interview process, that we want that sort of, I hate the term synergy, but it's working with the school um, to identify those sort of programs and targets where we can go. Um, one of the things the city has done poorly through its nonprofit sector, and this is not going to be nice, but there has been wasted money and wasted opportunity. Um, that came up in many, many of the meetings that the county has given money, but there was no accountability and no longitudinal studies on what happens to participants. Um, there's a new county workforce director now, if there's an acting person, um, there's going to be someone full time I've heard in the next month or two. So working with social services, the school and the county, that's where we'll be able to start planting those seeds of Let's do that. And there's there's various nonprofits in, in this, the city that do that. Are there one or two that you'd recommend? So I, I do this. I wouldn't recommend anyone because I don't want okay. to upset anybody. Okay. So I guess the question is, so I do this professionally by trade. I, I'm okay. a coach. I, I I'm, I'm sorry. Your, your time's up. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thanks. Well, we'll gladly talk to you. If you want to make an appointment, sure. sit down. Yeah. Tracy Rogers Sewell. Right now, I'm following up on the workforce development uh, piece that this young lady, uh, we're looking at many things that was in that report that I think we need to address <coughs> more effectively. Uh, and wholesale, what is our implementation plan gonna be? And are we gonna have someone directly responsible for some of these uh, added jobs or, 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 or different different measures that we're looking to implement so we can start looking at right now, what are we doing? The report actually gave us credit for things that we did. Uh, the expungement committee, I mean group that, that did that, which was a group of citizens that volunteered. We have a great bank uh, brain trust here that we use, need to utilize more effectively in committees which it talked about in that report. So we need to start sitting here doing more because we, we don't have the resources economically to actually push this through. So we need to look at outside the box uh, work uh, practices that's gonna work with us to advance this plan much quickly. Uh, we're in a situation where we need to 
take this city. I went with the mayor and we were in Atlantic City. Anybody that heard Asbury Park looked at us like we were doing a great job. And we have to start making sure that effectively we're doing that. The mayor represented himself at, at the social justice uh, committee very well. And I just wanna say how we can all work together and put more committees, more groups, and more synergy behind making this workforce development happen quicker than what we needed to happen and looking forward to what we're doing. And also on the uh, uh, housing piece, uh, Derek and I and quite a few others have put together a group called the Hospitality Network where the churches are also joining in for women that it's gonna be lost on December 4th where we're gonna have women who are out in the cold be able to come in we have only a limited amount of spaces because of ordinance, but the hospitality speak will be helping out with the homeless. So, so you're saying that the, the churches are gonna be able to house homeless women They're gonna, we're gonna have in a, or around December 4th? December 4th, we're gonna start, oh, wow. and it's only be five days a week or six days. We're looking at each church housing for one day a week, and we're gonna coordinate it. We want more churches involved in Asbury and not as many stepped up as we wanted to, but we are Freehold all to does about that, six. Right? Doesn't Freehold do a church? Yeah, they, yeah, do, a they do. We actually, we actually uh, recreating their their uh, program. Yeah, that's a great idea. You should um, get us the information so we can get it out. Yeah, there. we're, we're going to launch uh, December fourth, and I don't remember all the churches offhand. My mind is going, <laughs> but the other thing about the workforce development: are we going to have a centralized person? that we're gonna be able to go to right away to start implementing this implementation of a workforce development plan. That's gonna be me. Um, during many of the, during all the meetings, it was said that there needed to be one centralized place in City Hall. Um, as everyone knows in the past, it was through um, Tom Gilmore's office and there was discussions of doing it through communications. But everyone in all those meetings, and I, I concur with it, it needs to be from the top. If we're going to take it seriously, it needs to be the highest appointed official in the city, which is the city manager's office. So starting early next year, we're going to start implementing this. Um, however, we do following the steps. You know, there was immediate targets. There was short term and long term. Um, but it's going to start off with me because I'm the one who coordinates all the departments. And then we branch out from there. And thank you for the compliment, and I could have only done a good job because of the four speakers, which you were one of. Thank you. Yes, sir. I think be bad. My name is Kevin Strickland. I'm from 1102 Second Avenue, and I coach Little League in Asbury Park. And I just wanted to thank you for your support over the years. Danny McKay has done a great job. And I know that you have seen firsthand some of the experience and abilities of the kids throwing the baseball because they dunked you at the Oyster Fest, as you remember, uh, Paul. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. No but way. I just, <laughs> I haven't gone to a meeting before, so I want to come up at least uh, thank you for your support and participation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all you've done all year long and the past years also, because I know how much seeing you over there, you've been involved with the league. And next week we should have a hopefully if we can pull it off we're going to have a presentation to little league uh, on uh, benefactors park which danny knows about i don't know yeah, if he shared keep up the good work thank you hello felicia simmons asbury park sewell avenue um 1034 sewell avenue asbury <coughs> Um, I'm up here again to speak about um, also the workforce development plan that was implemented. I think I was one of the only ones who attended one of um, all of the meetings. Um, so I was seeing when they were pouring out the ideas for the um, development plan. Again, I'm going to mimic what um, Mr. Rogers said earlier about the implementation of it and seeing that Michael's doing it. Um, because it's so... Um, important. Do you think that you have enough time that will be allocated to the implementation of this plan? Because we have a lot of development going on. We have a lot going. You know that no, in the city. 
this has been a priority of everyone, so the time will be made. Um, I'm not concerned because it's the highest of high priorities for the council, for the citizenry. It's something that needs to be done. It will be done. Uh, I'm not concerned about time. Okay. And also, um, also to mimic part of what Tracy was saying and being a lifelong resident here and also um, um, adding to what this young lady was saying earlier, um, the community being um, the biggest asset, her herself, it being her profession, as I heard, and people like Tracy, people like myself, people like Comrade, people like the different people, Jerry, everybody in this room who um, put their time into developing this city. Um, someone said something to me earlier saying that we should be the still wall of Asbury Park. Um, we don't care about the outside lines. Not saying I don't care about the outside lines because I work throughout the state of New Jersey. But we, as a community, we have to make sure that we think of Asbury Park, one Asbury Park first, and make sure that our community is developed in a homogeneous um, way that everybody in our community benefits from it. So I am excited about um, this work plan. I'm excited about the implementation, implementation of it, sorry, it's late. After five, I'm, my mind is gone. Um, and Michael know that I will be at your door quite often um, harassing you. Um, not harassing you, hopefully working with you to make sure that it rolls, <laughs> working with you um, to roll out um, this plan because this employment plan is important. I sat with a room full of people today who are excited about employment and working, being able to work and live here in Asbury Park. So it's, um, it's big on our plans too. So thank you all council for um, make sure that this is priority and um, hopefully see everybody here continue to work and make sure that this is a great community. That's it, thank and you. I said it all, Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mayor and Council. Jerry Scrano, Long Branch. I'm um, sorry, Rita couldn't make it tonight. She's tired shopping for Thanksgiving. But anyway, um, um, what I'd like you to do, um, create a new topic on the city website called Report a Nice House with Lights. Because some of the houses already have lights on, so maybe we can get a, sh a competition going who has the best lighted up house. The snowflakes look good on Main Street. I think the sign on Main Street should tell people about snow emergencies so when people are driving through or you should have announcements going around telling people what a snow emergency is and where they should park. Um, okay, November 29th, Eric's going to be talking about the taxes. Um, I spoke to him today and that's what I think everybody should be concerned. The idea that four council people were compared to get against another house, you're probably paying the same taxes as your neighbors, so I find it interesting why someone would bring it up. I mean, they don't cut taxes for one house over another. There's a reason for it, and it's usually location, location, location. You can have one square foot in Times time Square worth a lot more than 10 houses in Asbury Park, so it's all about location. The other thing I want to say is, um, I've, for years, I've really been asking you for years, we need a timetable. We're up, probably up to year 15 on the redevelopment, and it's still not half done. So if you use the same pace that we're using in the past, we'll never be done in 30 years. And what would you say? Oh my God, Larry Fishman really screwed the city. You guys are watching the clock. We need a time schedule so people know what they're doing or not. We're not 50% redeveloped down there. And the other thing is, all these people jumping up and down, they're not gonna vote for you and all this other stuff. The way I see it is, you post the goals that you had last year and what you accomplished and how you kept the taxes from inflating, you'll gain a lot more votes than people that don't get their way. Because for what it is, you guys been a good council, don't let it go to your head, but <laughs> the thing is, just show us how you're holding to the goals that you set, what the goals Michael did, and maybe we'll pat him on the back too, but right now, it's, you know, we have to think about that. And um, the people griping about taxes, going after council members, they should be concerned about the nonprofits in town. They really want to help with the tax bills? How about making no more nonprofits in town? That's what you should be 
unified against, not you guys, against the Airbnb, but the nonprofits that aren't paying their fair share. And thank, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for listening to me. Thanks, thank Jerry. you. And thank you for thank you for reminding me so everybody knows on the 29th at 6 p.m there will be a meeting in this council chambers about taxes so anybody concerned about their taxes please attend the meeting and the tax assessor will be here to answer general and individual questions thanks for reminding me jerry hi maureen nevin dla court hi um i'm here to talk about um capricious enforcement because I think when people start to suspect that they're not getting treated equally, maybe it's because of some things that aren't quite even in the city. Um, for quite a while now, is this thing on? Yeah. For quite, thank you. <laughs> I never needed a mic anyway. Um, I have been addressing um, our attorney, our city attorney, and, and Michael, our city manager, and the mayor and the council about the fact that there are two uh, code violations right in my little community number one DLA court um, the there is no permit for the driveway the two-car driveway and there is no permit for the room on the roof and it says in the file that there are reasons why they don't have any permits and that was written by the zoning officer and uh, you're aware of it John and Michael is and Fred is what is the city's position on not enforcing some some people's zoning violations and enforcing other people's how do you justify that well I'm not going to get involved in it because it's a personnel issue, so I'm going to let the city manager or the city attorney address it. It's a personnel issue? It could become one. <coughs> and There's well, been recent case law um, earlier this year about mm -hmm. rice notifications, about handling and discussing any sort of activity in public. Um, if I said, you know, we'll have the fire department look at it, I think they messed up, that is then an onus on Kevin and we might be violating his rice notifications. Fred and I have talked extensively. It was a huge topic of discussion amongst the managers and administrators um, at the league last week. So involving any sort of position, I'm very, very hesitant to say anything because we might be <clears throat> um, trampling on someone's rice notifications. Well, we don't want to trample on the Open Public Meetings Act either, Michael because there are penalties for that. And could I hear a, a legal opinion from Fred? Yes, what Michael stated is correct. Uh, there is recent case law interpreting the rice notice requirements that have made it more uh, stringent upon municipalities. So we do have to be careful about what is addressed in a public forum that potentially relates to city employees. <coughs> but with that having been said, I am aware of the situation that you're referring to. You have communicated with me. I certainly will acknowledge that. I know Michael has looked into the situation and responded to you and you were not satisfied with the response that no because got. he first told me the permits existed and he couldn't produce them and, and the Cindy mayor could verify that has asked me to look into it and given other matters unfortunately that have been um, taking my attention I haven't been able to give it the type of attention that it is owed so I will make certain to review it and we will get back to you I guess my time is up well, we took some of yours. If you had a short question, Maureen, you could ask it. What was that? I said we took some of your time, so if you had another short question, you could by all means ask it. Well, but I, th I think. I would like to know what department we're talking about that might be a rice violation. Well, you, you mentioned it, I'm, so I'm not going to re re mention it. You're not going to re mention it. Right. So we're talking about the zoning office. So that's what you said, yes. But I think, <laughs> yes. Thank you, Ryan. Motion for well, clarifying what I'm saying. No. Yeah, Second. motion. Go ahead. Move it. All in favor? Move it. Second. Aye. Before we go to the agenda, Fred said he'll be in touch with you as far as this, your questions. 
and he apologized for not doing it sooner but there's been other things in front of us so I trust Fred will be in touch with you within you know, Thursday and Friday's Thanksgiving so it's not going to happen you know this week this but years, okay okay you will get an answer from Fred within the next two weeks is that fair yeah that's fair okay and I know the problem has persisted for years and Michael did address it um, uh, some time ago and then pursuant to recent communications that you had with the mayor the mayor asked me to review it once again so uh, okay agenda we'll move on to the minutes we have three sets of minutes this evening executive session minutes of November 8 2017 Workshop minutes of November 8, 2017, and regular session minutes of November 8, 2017. Can I have a motion to approve, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to the consent agenda. Resolution 2017-345, resolution approving award of contract for regional contribution agreement for 1114 Asbury Avenue. 2017-346, resolution approving award of contract for regional contribution agreement for 1521 Sewell Avenue. 2017-347, resolution approving award of contract for regional contribution agreement for 1007 4th Avenue. 2017-348 resolution to approve person to person and place to place liquor transfer from Durango Inc to AVG Liquor Holdings LLC. Resolution 2017-349 resolution of the City of Asbury Park County and Mama's Day in New Jersey authorizing compensation payment to Terry Williams upon a separation of employment. Resolution 2017-350, resolution authorizing transfer of appropriations in the fiscal year 2017 budget. 2017-351, resolution canceling balances of grant revenue receivables and grant appropriated. 2017-352, resolution of credit sewer account block 2603 lot 10 for 615 Asbury Avenue. And resolution 2017-353, resolution to waive interest due to error in sewer billing, block 4305, lot 9, 301 7th Avenue. Does anybody wish to have any of those items removed from the consent agenda? Hearing none, can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We're on to individual resolutions. Resolution 2017-355, rejecting bids for phase three of Springwood Avenue Park improvements. Did Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? No, go ahead. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. I think you skipped 354. Skipped bills. Oh, you know what? It was opposite on mine. Sorry. Okay. okay. Resolution 2017-354, resolution authorizing the payment of bills. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. No. to proper order now resolution 2017-356 awarding a contract to lucas construction group for the springwood avenue sanitary sewer project Can I have a motion please Move Move it. It. Second. Second. any comments or questions no councilmember chapman yes councilmember clayton yes councilmember kendall yes deputy mayor quinn yes mayor moore yes Resolution 2017-357, authorizing project management and construction coordination and inspection services to T&M Associate for the 2015 road program. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-358, resolution authorizing change orders with, block, with BlackRock enterprises for the road program. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? 
Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. 2017-359 resolution authorizing change order 16 with Black Rock Enterprises for the road program. Kind of a motion, please. Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-360. Resolution of the Mayor and Council of the City of Asbury Park referring proposed amendments of the Main Street Redevelopment Plan to the City of Asbury Park Planning Board and directing the Planning Board to take actions pursuant to NJSA 48-12A-7E. Before you, before you move that forward, uh, I did want to bring to your attention that the Director of Planning and Redevelopment um, has indicated that a slight revision is necessary with regard to the amendment that's being proposed to the community shopping zone, um, specifically relating to music recording studios. A slight change in the language to change the word music to sound, sound recording studios, and also artist live work rehearsal space. Previously, it just said live work, Where is and it? she's added rehearsal space. No, it's just it's just sound recording studio slash rehearsal space. Okay. Inclusive definition. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, in the Asbury Avenue Gateway, where we have artist live workspace, yes. is that artist live work sell space? Can they sell their product there as well? Yes. Okay. And again, this is just referring this to the planning board for a re review and recommendation before you move forward to change the uh, Main Street redevelopment plan. <coughs> Can I have a motion, please? Required. This course Move of action is required <coughs> under the local redevelopment and housing law, procedurally. Okay. 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 Yeah. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Can I have a second? Oh. Second. Second. Okay. I have a question. Question. Just because I, I asked Michael this earlier in the week, so I guess that was yesterday. <coughs> I, I have a problem with part of it, but it won't be affected until we go out for RFP, correct? For a concession, yeah. For a concession, okay. Thank you. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-361, a resolution of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Asbury Park authorizing the third amendment to the redevelopment and land disposition agreement with the Michaels Development Company one LP and redevelop for certain parcels located within the city of Springwood Avenue redevelopment area. Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor or Councilmember Kendall. Sorry. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2017-362, Resolution of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Asbury Park refer, referring proposed amendments to the Waterfront Redevelopment Plan to the City of Asbury Park's <coughs> Planning Board and directing the Planning Board to take certain actions pursuant to NJSA 48-12A-7E. -E. It was a recommendation of the staff to table the Motion resolution. Motion to table. Move it. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We have one ordinance for introduction this evening. That's Ordinance 2017-44, an ordinance repealing Section 2-43, entitled Public Art Committee of Chapter 2 Administration and establishing a new Section 2-43 thereof, entitled Public Arts Commission, and amending Sections 4-18, entitled Murals, of Chapter 4, General Licensing of the Code of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey. And before you move this forward, there's a slight revision to this as well, also from the Director of Planning and Redevelopment. The way it was originally drafted, the ordinance uh, says that the commission shall consist of seven regular members and two alternate members, and the recommendation is to change the regular membership from seven members to nine and two alternate members. Correct. So the members of the public will be increased from five to seven among the roster of uh, membership list. Yes. Can I have a motion to introduce, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for December 13, 2017. If there's no other business, can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Happy birthday, Michelle. <laughs> it's Michelle's birthday? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Happy birthday, Michelle. I had to say that's the way I beat her up.
Let me say this. Let me say this. <laughs>